and welcome. Um, we are here today to learn about coping with stress during this time of your journey with cancer, recovery, remission, wherever you are on your journey, as well as just coping with stress in general, because stress is a part of our daily lives and there are ways for us to make it a little bit easier and not so consuming. So I'm going to share my screen, but before I do, um, just some housekeeping rules. Um, the session might go a little longer than an hour. I have a lot that I want to share and cover with you all. So if you have to pop out early, don't worry. We are recording. You will get the recording. And I will also email a resource after, which has everything we're going to cover today. So if you miss anything, if you're taking notes, and you miss anything, please don't worry. It will be in the resource. And I'm going to include the meditation we're going to do today as well in email so you can have that download it to your phone, your laptop, whatever it is, and you can listen to it at any time that you need to assist on your journey. So I will share my screen without further ado. So I'm going to minimize this. Okay. Here we go. Well, Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is a wonderful collaboration between myself, Hannah, I'm the CEO and co-founder, or founder, sorry, of Healing with Hannah. Um, with Stomach Cancer Sisters, we have the beautiful Abby here, and of course, with Hope for Stomach Cancer. And so again, welcome. You're probably wondering who I am if you haven't seen me before. I am Hannah Stinson. I am a divine healer, spiritual reader, life coach, and yoga teacher. And I'm also a chronic disease warrior. Through my chronic disease journey, I have really felt that I didn't have proper support for my mental health or even my emotional health um, and self-care practices to help with my overall growth and well-being. So Creating and designing this program with the support of Aki and Abby has been absolutely phenomenal because I really wanted to bring these types of healing practices to all of you um, since it was something that I really had to learn on my own for the last 10 years. So we are going to start with a sound bowl healing and gratitude meditation just to really get us grounded and in the in the right mindset, so to speak. So I am gonna use my little sound bowl here. Uh, if you're not familiar with the sound of a sound bowl, the way sound waves can be a little bit strong. So if you need to just turn down your volume, if you're like, oh, this is a little loud for me, please do so. But if you are an avid sound bowl um, lover, I know Abby is, <laughs> you can always turn the volume up, you know, really make it accessible um, for you. and it will just be exactly what you need. So when you are ready, I just invite you to get a little more comfortable, maybe wiggle around in your seat if you need to. And if it feels safe, you can gently close your eyes and begin to breathe deeply. Just noticing your inhales and your exhales. Maybe feeling yourself growing a little taller on your inhale and relaxing a little more on your exhale. We are going to begin with three soothing breaths together, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Again, even deeper if you can, whatever feels comfortable, don't force it. And one more. And then just allow your breath to return to its natural rhythm in through the nose and out through the nose. Just becoming conscious of your breath, having gratitude for your breathing, how it flows through your body so effortlessly. Thank you. 
invite you to begin to feel a deep sense of gratitude about the things, the people, the experiences in your life. Maybe you feel grateful for something you have, like your home, your bed, or maybe a person or people or even animals arise in your mind. See what you are grateful for clearly in your mind's eye, inhaling all of these people, animals, things deep into your imagination. And as you exhale, whispering to yourself, thank you. Begin to become grateful for yourself, your health, your wisdom, your kindness. Be grateful for those times you stood up for yourself or someone else. Be grateful for your ability to love yourself and others. Inhaling and imagining you are giving yourself the biggest, most adoring hug. And exhaling, whispering to yourself, thank you. Beginning to become aware of the little things in your life that bring you joy. The sunshine on your face, the smell of grass after a thunderstorm, the way your best friend laughs, or a warm cup of tea. Whatever the little things are to you, allow them to arrive in your mind's eye, breathing in, feeling grateful for even these little things, remembering that these things have importance too. Exhaling and whispering to yourself, thank you. As you take your next breath, feel how lovely it is to breathe freely. Be grateful for your breath, bringing you fresh life. Exhaling and just allowing your breath to fall away, feeling your body sinking deeper into relaxation. Now bringing your attention to the world around you and feeling even more gratitude. The beauty of gratitude is the more you feel it, the more it expands and grows. By expressing gratitude, we are able to live in the present moment without obsession. We are able to recognize ourselves as we are naturally not as we think we should be or the expectation of someone or something. Just being thankful for who we truly are. Be 
because the truth is we can truly enjoy the things we have and we don't necessarily need anything more. We have everything we need to make our time here on earth within ourselves. Be grateful for your existence because you are here. You are present. You are everything the world needs. Breathing in and beginning to derive pleasure from all of your senses. Bringing to your mind's eye whatever swells your heart with love. When was the last time you felt goosebumps over a beautiful moment? Focus on this moment. Focus on the sounds, the sights, the smells, the feelings. Feel the tingle on your skin that is the uncontrollable response to being in the presence of love. Reside in the moment of love for your next three breaths. On your next inhale, feel the beauty of this feeling growing inside. And as you exhale, allow these things to grow so large that they force out anything that takes your energy or threatens the brilliance of your spirit. And then bringing all of your awareness back to your heart. Remembering that the love that you carry for all these things is always with you in your heart. And as you continue to breathe, recognize the strength that focusing on these things brings you. Imagine this strength building inside like a beam of light and the light is intensifying to the maximum degree. And as you breathe out, you recharge and relax. brightness to build with every breath and see yourself twinkling like a star. Now hear yourself saying the following with conviction in your mind's eye. I am grateful for this moment. I am grateful I chose to take the time to express gratitude. I embrace each day with gratitude because I know I am worth it. Every day I begin to become more mindful of the small blessings that I can be thankful for. Each day I am grateful for the beauty of life the bitter and sweet, the accomplishments and the lessons. I am thankful for the privileges that I have been blessed with. I am grateful for my family and friends. I am grateful for my healing. 
I am grateful for myself. And then give thanks right now to anything and everything you can possibly think of. to find the time in your day, every day, whether it is one minute or several, to fully express feelings of gratitude. By doing so, you are increasing the prosperity not only for yourself, but the world around you. I hope you are able to go about your evening with a little bit more gratitude. Gently bringing your awareness back to the present moment. Maybe wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes. Opening your eyes when you feel ready, there's no rush. The divine light in me honors the divine light in each and every one of you. Namaste. Okay, thank you. So I wanted to just make a note that this sound bowl is uh, for the solar plexus chakra and the solar plexus chakra relates directly to the stomach. Um, and so I wanted to use it to help bring high vibrations to your healing through your cancer journeys. So without further ado, we'll keep going into the session. There's a lot to cover today. Uh, and we're just going to talk a little bit, you know, what this is about. What is stress? You know, stress is considered to be the feelings of being overwhelmed or unable to cope with emotional or mental pressure, which can come from our physical realities. You know, this is different for all of us, but stress is our, in our innate response to danger. This is hormonal and influences our stress responses, the most commonly known are fight, flight, and freeze. There's also fawn, but we're not going to get into fawn today. So whether the danger is real or imagined, immediate or far away, our bodies don't know the difference. So I wrote an example down because this is something I think that's pretty common for all of us is, you know, you're driving to work and someone swerves into the lane in front of you, almost hitting you in the process and causing you to swerve out of the way as well. And so you end up not getting into an accident. You know you're safe, but your stress response of fight has been activated, okay? Because there was the potential onset of that danger. So this is why even after, when you know you are safe and haven't been hit, you might still feel very activated. Maybe your um, heart is racing, maybe your chest feels tight, maybe you're sweating. This is because your body has turned up the cortisol um, to keep you safe and has put you into that fight mode. This upsurge of cortisol is really designed to keep you safe. It does have a purpose, but this becomes an issue when we start to get really stressed throughout the rest of our day. So like maybe you end up at work and then you know, you're getting ready to log off and it's 445 and your boss messages you sends you that email saying I need that report due tonight and you're supposed to be done at five this can cause that same cortisol that happened that was that surge during when you were driving and almost being hit to be released again okay and then the, the issue with this is the cortisol starts to live in our body for much longer than is than it's meant to which continues to cause us to be in um, acute states of stress and even can lead to chronic states of stress and so this is very true when you're going through a journey such as all of yours and something I've experienced with my chronic disease journey as well. So some symptoms of stress. There is emotional, physical, and mental. And the emotional really comes down to feelings of anxiety, guilt, irritability, being upset or sad, 
loss of interest, enjoyment, or energy, and something you might have used to really enjoy, whether that's a hobby or just like talking to your friends, talking to your family, expressing yourself. The physical symptoms of stress are, you know, these are just a few, but the main ones are our heart racing, our blood pressure being elevated, headache, chest pain, gut issues, right? Like feeling like butterflies in your stomach or feeling nauseous, um, change of sleep patterns that can be insomnia or just extreme, extreme exhaustion, which turns into chronic exhaustion, change in appetite or restlessness. And then of course, our mental symptoms end up being negative thinking and negative self-talk, difficulty in concentration and difficulty making decisions. And so the negative thinking and negative self-talk is a really big one for when we're stressed, which is why I wanted to include the gratitude meditation. And of course, why I'm going to send you an audio file of it so that you can continue to come back to states of gratitude because that really lifts our, our energetic vibration back up and helps with our mental states. So there's three types of stress. We have acute stress, we have chronic stress, and we have episodic acute stress. So acute stress, like I mentioned, is like that barely missing the car accident um, or like missing an important deadline for work. Or if you, you know, have children being asked to see the principal because of your child's behavior, things that are just like, oh, like stress us out in that moment. The symptoms of acute stress are short, okay? And they, they dissipate when the stress goes away. If acute stress isn't released or properly dealt with, um, the mind can then extend the stress by constantly worrying about it, um, which then affects our sleep, affects our, our self-talk, and then it can really trigger those physical um, symptoms of stress as well. Next, we go into episodic acute stress. So that's when we are really living in a state of stress that's causing us tension, anxiety, worry that is fueled by constantly taking on more than we can handle or being or living with burden. And of course, sometimes our situations are different. It can be living with burden that you brought on yourself or when you're going through such a journey as all of yours, living with cancer can really feel burdening. Symptoms of this type of stress um, our heart palpitations, chest pain, headaches, you know, the usual that I already mentioned, and they usually last longer and occur more often and really start to get worse over time. So if this type of stress is not dealt with or managed, it can lead to depression or illness. And then of course we have chronic stress, which a lot of our bodies on a physical level are dealing with when you're living with cancer or in my situation, living with multiple chronic diseases. So the ongoing stress that takes a toll over time, this is that happens with our serious life problems, chronic illness or disease, living with trauma, specifically childhood trauma, experiencing poverty or racism, just to name a few. These are things that um, are or seem out of our control because we don't know when the stress will end. Symptoms of chronic stress show up as illness and disease, and this manifests as emotional, mental, and physical, okay? If chronic stress is not managed, it can lead to living with serious health conditions, bowel disease, heart disease, mental illness, substance abuse, um, and when stress is chronic, um, it causes this like biochemical changes in the body, which affects our immune system, leaving the body receptive to disease and illness. So we can see here that stress has a huge impact on every single one of us. And like I said, it's going to show up very different for all of us. But most of us here are living with chronic stress because of our current situations and I really wanted to touch on this and we'll go into so many ways that we can manage our stress because that's what's gonna help us on our journeys. So stress management. <laughs> so now we know, you know, when we live with stress, we are putting our well-being at risk for, like I said, emotional, mental, and physical chronic health conditions. Chronic stress affects how we respond to situations in our lives, how we function effectively, how we just enjoy our overall life. Sometimes it really does feel like there's nothing I can do, you know, but we really have to give ourselves um, the credit that we have more control than sometimes we feel we have, which is 
so normal when we're going through such huge life complications to feel like everything's out of our control, okay? I'm never going to invalidate that, but I really want to um, come home today to help you all remember that you do have control and we're going to get into to see how, okay? Effective stress management gives us a chance to take that control back so we can, you know, be happier, be healthier, and increase productivity and positivity in our day-to-day -day lives. Allowing us to strive for a balanced life, balance between work, relationships, relaxation, and fun, just to name a few, and the ability to handle any challenges and pressure that comes our way with overall resilience. Because if there's one word to describe every single one of you, it is resilience. You are all so resilient. And I hope you tell yourselves that because I see it and it is truly, truly beautiful. So never forget how resilient you are. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about avoiding unnecessary stress. So these are just some examples. Learning to say no. We need to know our limits. We need to remember that saying yes to everything leads to overwhelm. I'm sure we've all experienced that in our life or before maybe the pandemic, our calendars were a little bit more booked up and there was those, those birthday parties, those anniversaries, those, you know, get togethers that maybe you're just like, oh, I really don't have the energy to go, but I don't want them to be mad at me. So you think, okay, I'm just going to say yes. But then, you know, it leads to us feeling resentful. And so when we say no, even though it sometimes is so hard at first, I can tell you I was a chronic people pleaser for many years before I learned that no is my best friend. Um, and one thing I really want to remind all of you, or, or maybe this is new, but, um, you know, when you say no, it's okay to feel guilty. Because in my opinion, and also in the words of Dr. Gabor Mate, when you say no and you feel guilty, it means you're putting yourself first. That guilt means you're putting yourself first. Guilt is an emotion that really doesn't get stuck in our bodies on a physiological level. Resentment does. And resentment happens when we say yes to things that we really don't want to do. Okay? So just a little thing to to think about. And if you're interested in who Dr. Gabor Mate is, if you're not sure, he has a wonderful book called When the Body Says No. It is fabulous. It changed my life. I recommend it to all of you. Another way is to avoid those who stress you out. If someone in your life is constantly stressing you out with their stress or just like projecting whatever onto you, really try to limit your time with them or maybe even end the relationship altogether. You deserve to protect your peace, especially with everything you're going through. It's another one that seems hard and it's not, and I'm not going to lie, sometimes it's not easy if those people are really integral parts of our lives. But again, your peace is worth more than being with those people who are constantly going to put you in that state of stress, boosting that cortisol in your body, which then stays in your body for way too long and leads to that chronic stress, which leads to our physical, mental, and emotional ailments. Really, another big one is taking control of your environment. You know, this is just a little example, but if you don't like shopping in person, if you can do so online, you know, I get very, very anxious when I'm in grocery stores. So for the most part, either my partner goes or <laughs> we do our shopping online. If you're not a fan of driving, take public transit, a taxi or Uber. Again, another one example for me, at least I don't like driving. It gives me a lot of anxiety. So I'm a big fan of public transit, which has made me feel like I can take my power back in that sense. And then of course, analyzing your to-do list. Do you have too many things going on? Categorize them by priority. I like to use the big three and little three method. Okay, the big three are the three things that I gotta get done, okay? 
And that doesn't just apply to my work. That could be like, oh my God, the laundry has been piling up for weeks. I got to get the laundry done today, you know? And so you prioritize those big three things. Those things, you know, you got to get done today. The little three are things that you can carry on to the next day. Maybe in a week or two, one of the little three becomes a big three, who knows? But just know that when you simplify it, it really allows you again to take that control back and avoid feeling overwhelmed. Next, I want to just mention to you about adapting to the stress, okay? This is not necessarily one that comes overnight. This is a practice like anything, right? When we think of meditation or yoga, those are practices. Adapting to the stress is also a practice. A big one is reframing, okay? This is a really wonderful way to get ourselves out of that negative thinking and into that positive thinking, out of that negative self-talk and into that positive self-talk. Reframing our problems. So do your best to view the stressful situation from a positive light. If you are sick and you need to take time off work, look at it as a chance of giving your body the time it needs to heal. You are not failing. You know, our hustle culture makes us believe that if we're not working, we're not living life, we're failing life. That is like the most, like the complete farthest from the truth, okay? When you prioritize yourself, you are successful. Um, it really does, it really does help to try to reframe those little things. Big picture thinking. Getting perspective of the stressful situation will uh, really assist us in managing that stress. So ask yourself, will this matter in one year? Will this matter in five years? If the answer is no, it won't matter, do your best to focus your attention elsewhere. Now, of course, when it comes to living with cancer, it comes to living with chronic disease, sometimes that's hard for us to even ask ourselves those things because it's like, well, we go into an existential crisis. Well, will I be here in that time? So if, if you're not able to do the big, big picture thinking at this point on your journey, don't beat yourself up. That is totally okay. We work with where we're at. We meet ourselves where we're at. Adjust your standards. <laughs> Perfectionism is just like a huge source of stress. And I'm sure, you know, we've all been there in one way or another. Nobody's perfect. Nobody. No one. We wouldn't want to be perfect. We need our flaws, so to speak, to help us grow as humans, right? So give yourself grace when you don't feel you're good enough. It's okay to set reasonable standards for yourself and others you know we don't we don't want to live in the world of perfectionism it's not it's not going to give us the satisfaction ever and again i'm also a recovering perfectionist so i really know <laughs> about adjusting my standards especially for myself the next one which we kind of already you know really really owned in on in that meditation is practicing gratitude if you ask me, gratitude is the key to a joy-filled life. When life is getting you down, really take time to reflect on all the things that are going well in your life, including your positive qualities and your unique gifts, right? It's wonderful to have gratitude for the roof over our head, the food we can eat, the ability to go for a walk, and the, how we can breathe so effortlessly even though there are some days I'm sure where we get caught up with our breath, but be so grateful for who you are, for your resiliency, coming back to that, knowing that you are so resilient on your journey. And of course, share your feelings. Express to a loved one, someone you feel safe with, maybe a therapist or a counselor or a healer, what you are going through. Because this can be very healing, even if there's no solution to the stressful situation, just having that positive outlet to vent, to get it off your chest so that other person can just hold you, you know, they don't have to respond, they don't have to give answers, just have someone holding space for you is really, really helpful. And of course, stress management is not one size fits all. We have to experiment. We have to figure out what is going to work best for us. 
So if none of this is like resonating with you, I am included lots of resources um, that will be in your, your downloadable resource that goes even deeper into different ways you can adapt to the stress. So now we're gonna talk a little bit more of different practices we can do. These are more like tangible things we can do on the daily. Um, one that I started a few years ago when I was just so overwhelmed, constantly stressed. My therapist was just like, Hannah, like, you know, this is contributing to your chronic diseases, which I really understand now, was starting a stress journal. So it's a journal where you can regularly identify the stress in your life um, and the healthy way in which you can deal with the stress. Each time you feel stressed, you keep track of it in your journal. Maybe if a journal isn't your thing, use your phone. There's even stress tracker apps. I've never used one, but I did go on the app store before this and I was ch checking them out a little bit. Um, or you can just use like the notes section in your phone. This daily log enables you to see patterns um, so you can identify and heal them, right? Like awareness is our first step to healing. So it's really just a, a helpful start, so to speak. So these are just some of the things that I, I would write in my stress journal. Um, so, you know, what caused the stress? Was it you know, procrastination, missing a deadline, forgetting a doctor's appointment, not taking your medication? That was a big one for me, forgetting to take my medication and beating myself up for it, okay? Um, and then I'd ask myself, how do I feel? And I'd check in with everything, emotional, you know, was I getting really in my head about that negative self-talk? Hannah, you're not good enough. Why can't you remember to take your medication? What was my mental state? What was my physical state? Usually I would get sick to my stomach because I would, I'd work myself up so much and that cortisol would just be like, boom, through my body. I would reflect on what I said to myself in that situation. Again, that negative self-talk, that inner critic that likes to sneak in. So that way, when I go back and I reflect after I've written all that out, I can reframe it, right? Like we talked about a little bit in the previous slides about reframing it. So I can say, okay, let's say I said to myself, oh, Hannah, you just can't do anything right. Never take your meds on time. Always forget. I think to myself, okay, no, Hannah, you're only human. Sometimes you forget to take your meds. That's okay. You're going to remember next time. You're going to set a reminder on your phone. You're going to get your mom to help you, your partner to help you, whatever the case may be. And then I check in to see if what I'm feeling is realistic. Am I grounded in fact or am I grounded in fear? I'm not a horrible person for forgetting to take my meds. None of us would be. That's not fact but that's my own fear because I have a fear of, oh my gosh, if I forgot to take my meds for one or two nights in a row, then I'm gonna end up with a serious flare up from one of my diseases, right? And that's rational to have that fear, but most of the time I'm able to get back on track, right? Because I start to reframe and talk to myself more positively. You're gonna do it next time. You put that reminder on your phone. How can I change my thinking to reflect more realistically towards the situation? Just like I said, right? Put that reminder on my phone. I'm getting other people to remind me. I'm getting that guidance and assistance. And then how did you act in response? So now you're starting to reflect more. You're starting to calm yourself down. Okay, so now how can I go forward with this? And then, of course, lastly, what did you do to make yourself feel better? Maybe you, you ran a nice warm bath enjoyed a nice bath by candlelight. Maybe you just talked it out with your partner, with a friend, with a parent, many different things, of course, whatever works for you in that moment, depending on what the stress is. Okay, <laughs> this is a big one for me. And sometimes it's hard when we're in a lot of pain, but moving your body, you know, physical activity is a known stress reliever. Exercise releases endorphins that make us feel good. So it's a healthy way to cope with stress um, as it distracts our mind from pessimistic thinking, from negative thinking. So these are just a few activities 
to do. Um, you know, I <laughs> usually the ones I do um, put on some music and dance. My favorite song. I love Donna Summer, so I'll put some Donna Summer on and I'll just dance around my kitchen or my room. Um, going for a walk after dinner or any any time after I eat. Um, I shared a little bit with some of you at the beginning. I'm recovering from a big um, liver resection surgery. And so when I eat, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate, like I, I feel pretty sick after I eat. So going for a walk after I eat not only helps me digest better, but it also helps me um, release any stress around, oh my God, am I, gonna, am I not gonna digest this food? <laughs> like those things. Maybe walking to the store instead of driving if you have the energy. Um, using the stairs, not necessarily at your work, but like anywhere that has stairs over an elevator. Um, having a workout accountability buddy is a really good one to help you stay on track. Um, you know, that's something that I like to do since I don't always like working out. <laughs> um, practicing yoga. I'm a yoga teacher and we will be doing some yoga um, classes in the near future. So yoga is such a wonderful way to move your body and in such a gentle way. Maybe playing a game with your kids that, you know, maybe on the Wii, like playing tennis or just going outside and playing tag. Uh, you know, it's winter for a lot of us. So going skating, maybe practicing uh, Tai Chi or Qigong, if you're familiar with either of those, it's a really good way to move stuck and stagnant energy from your body. Going for a swim in the summer or if you have access to a pool. Whatever you do, make sure it's something you can enjoy and something you can stick with, something you can make um, either a daily habit or a weekly habit. So, of course, what comes after exercise? Maintaining a healthy lifestyle. So in addition to obviously exercise and movement, um, an overall healthy lifestyle is really key to managing stress eating a healthy diet. You know, it's it's important to be mindful of what you're eating um, will, because this will assist with these feelings of stress. Our bodies run on the fuel we give them. So if we're eating junk constantly, this will reflect back in your body. Um, you know, a diet full of caffeine, fat, and sugar can make you agitated, restless, sluggish, and unmotivated, and also can really, really contribute to our energetic states of bringing in illness or disease. And it's hard because sometimes when we're in those states of stress, we crave the sugar, we crave the fatty food, we crave the chips, that's my me at least. So it's really about being mindful of that and you know, going slow. If you're not used to eating a healthy diet, don't like put all this pressure on yourself to throw out all the junk food and go to the store and only buy vegetables. Like maybe start three times a week cooking a little bit healthier, those kinds of things, you know, be gentle with yourself. Reducing caffeine and sugar, which is a hard, I know a lot of people love coffee. Um, you know, the temporary highs that we experience from both of these lead to a crash of energy. And that really um, affects our ability to relax and sleep. So I do not drink coffee. It was hard for me to give up. It's been five years but I became addicted to coffee. I became addicted to that high from the caffeine and then I would crash. And I, no wonder at the time, I was pretty much um, an insomniac. I couldn't sleep because I was constantly drinking coffee. Um, I mean, I was in university, but that doesn't give me any excuse. <laughs> Avoiding alcohol, cigarettes and drugs. This is probably sounds straight, straightforward, but self-medicating to escape um, from stress or numbing out only allows for that temporary relief and turns into long-term complications. It's really important that we try not to mask our challenges with substances um, and deal with these challenges in the present moment with a clear mind uh, because it, you know, it really doesn't help. It, as much as sometimes we think it's a, it's a coping mechanism that works in the moment, in the long run, it can lead to addiction. And then of course, getting enough sleep. Sleep fuels the body, mind, and soul. When we are tired, this just increases our stress levels and can cause us to really think irrationally and fuels that negative self-talk, fuels all those things. And it's really, really 
really frustrating and really hard for us. And I know that sometimes sleep can be something that doesn't necessarily come easy when we're on our journeys, especially living with chronic stress through our current situations. But we will talk a little bit on how to help with um, relaxation and sleep. Here we go, <laughs> prioritizing rest and sleep. So when we first prioritize rest and sleep, sometimes you're met with, but I can't sleep. And if this is the case, do your best not to fight it. Get up, okay, tossing and turning, or like watching the clock, like being like, okay, I have five more hours. Oh no, now I only have four more hours, right? Until your alarm goes off to start your day. This just increases our stress more. So instead, get up, sit in a comfortable chair, or if you don't have that opportunity, sit up in your bed, read a book, play a card game, like maybe solitaire, something on your phone if you have, maybe watch a heartwarming show on TV, you know, no murder mysteries, no thrillers, you don't want to get your, get yourself, your subconscious all worked up, maybe try journaling, or practice some deep breathing exercises, um, these are going to be really wonderful ways to just calm your central nervous system and then get you even more relaxed. And before you know it, you're off to sleep. Um, deep breathing is a really, really wonderful one to do. This helps to increase the oxygen flow in our blood, releasing endorphins and just promoting overall relaxation. So some you can do is breathing in through your nose for a count of three and exhaling out your mouth for a count of five. Okay, and then repeat that 10 to 15 times. That's one that I actually do before bed every single night, um, or I do another one called Nadi Shadana, which is alternate nostril breathing. But I would start with just regular deep breathing before you get into um, anything a little bit more um, complicated, even though alternate nostril breathing is not complicated. And I will teach it to you um, when we have our yoga class for coping with stress in about a month's time. So this is my favorite, favorite one for coping with stress is making time for fun and relaxation. So a positive attitude can go a long way. And part of that means in scheduling me time, scheduling time for you. Um, really allow yourself to take care of your own needs without getting caught up in the hustle of life. Tending to your own needs, nurturing your body, mind, and soul is a necessity, not a luxury. Okay, it is a necessity, my friends. Regularly making time for fun and relaxation allows us to better handle the stressors in our life. So, leisure time. That's including rest and relaxation into your routine. It's allowing your body to recharge, you know, like recharge those batteries. Um, and of course, like leisure time can be whatever that means to you. For me, a big one is having a bubble bath. <laughs> That is my leisure time. That is where I completely disconnect and allow myself to relax and recharge. Another one I wanted to include here is laughter. Laughter is one of the best medicines because the act of laughing with ourselves or others helps us fight the stress in our bodies. It like has this counter, um, counter reaction with that biochemical changes that happen from stress, okay? Relaxation practices, we already talked a bit about it, but yoga, meditation, deep breathing, they all activate our body's relaxation response, which again, counters our stress response. So really good things to bring into um, your daily or weekly routines. Another big one is exploring your spirituality. This can be through meditation. This can be through different types of reading about different types of spiritual practices divination practices, just to name a few, because this is really nourishment for your soul. We can't forget we are mind, body, and soul. Develop your hobbies and interests. This is a chance for you to get back into painting or biking or playing the piano or any activity that you might have enjoyed as a child or at one point in your life. But I really like to bring up the child because we all have an inner child within us, right? And as we grow up, as we become adults, as we get caught up in life, we forget that that inner child has wants to be tended to. It wants to have a safe place to express itself. So that's why I just suggest maybe trying an activity again that you love to do as a kid. 
enjoying nature is a big one. Going for a walk in the park, enjoying the animals, the birds, the flora, the fauna, right? The flowers, the plants. Um, if you can't get outside, if, if enjoying nature out in, um, you know, it's too cold or whatever it is, wherever you are on your, on your journey, then maybe try tending to some plants in your home, maybe gardening if it's that time of year, maybe just repotting plants in your house. Um, I love plants, I have them everywhere. I think they're so healing and they really give us a chance to come back to nature. And then giving back to others, volunteering your time or energy to divert your attention to helping others allows to reduce stress and anxiety. Of course, only if you have the capacity to do so. Um, but when you do, it really does feel really, really good. So <laughs> practicing meditation, I want to touch on this more because practicing meditation is a wonderful way to practice relaxing. You know, meditation is proven to reduce feelings of anxiety and there's so many types of meditation. There's formal meditation practices, which include like, you know, your seated meditation, your own, your mindfulness meditation or yoga. Um, you know, meditation can be guided by audio, video, or through written word. We could read a meditation to yourself, but meditation is whatever you want it to be. Okay. It can be activated through any activity that you find enjoyable and relaxing such as cooking, gardening, walking in nature, swimming, just to name a few. I know for me, when I'm cooking, I'm in a true meditative state. I put on some relaxing music and I just let myself be one with the cooking, with the smells. You know, it just is such a beautiful practice for me. So don't get too caught up if you're like, I hate seated meditation. I just can't do it. You know, it takes time. It takes practice. So do what works for you um, because you just really want it to bring you joy. And before you know it, you'll be integrating that mindfulness into your life every single day. Another really big one that has helped me with coping with stress is taking a break from technology. So giving yourself, you know, a hiatus, so to speak, from your phone, from your computer, from your TV, um, this will give you an insight on what your senses respond to best. So just some examples is like when you're driving to a destination, maybe try listening to relaxing music or driving in silence instead of listening to the radio or the news and being activated by all the things going on in the world that are causing stress. When you're in line at the grocery store, maybe try people watching or paying attention to what you can hear and see instead of you know texting on your phone or scrolling through Instagram. Before a meeting, whether that's a work meeting or something like this, maybe try deep breathing or just like sitting there and drinking your coffee or tea. And I'm a tea drinker and I just love to smell the, the sense of the tea and get really grounded by the activity of just drinking my tea. And then, you know, a big one that has helped me when I'm waiting for doctor's appointments, because I get so stressed about doctor's appointments and I'm sure a lot of you can relate is I will meditate usually, I'll practice some deep breathing, or I'll just give myself a hand massage. And this doesn't have to be anything, you know, crazy. It's just, you know, rubbing my hand, getting grounded, being present in my body. Um, just little things that really help us take a step back from technology, because we're so used to being in front of screens, especially, um, you know, through the pandemic, where we don't have the opportunity necessarily to go out as much. And then another big one is learning to relieve stress in the moment. So learning to manage stress in the moment, just with some quick stress relieving techniques. I've said it many times with deep breathing, right? Use that same deep breathing technique that you would use to help you rest or sleep. Um, you know, when we're, when we're stressed out, our breathing can become a little scattered, a little irregular. Just closing your eyes. I always put my hands over my heart. Just come back and center myself. 
Another great one is using your five senses um, for sight, maybe looking at a favorite photo, sound, listening to that common music, smell. For me, I will smell some lavender essential oil. Um, touch, you know, pet your dog or cat if you have one, maybe if you have like a fuzzy blanket or something. Um, taste could be tea, could be a piece of gum, whatever it is. And then observe your body. Are your muscles tense? Are they sore? Is your stomach tight, cramped, aching? Are your hands or jaws clenched? Right? And then release that because you can do so by coming back to that deep breathing and letting it go. They sound very simple and they are, and they really do work, I promise you. So we are gonna actually, well, I, apparently I decided we're doing alternate nostril breathing today. I think we have enough time. Um, we're a little bit over, but we will, we'll do this quickly and then we'll, we only have a few more things to cover. So this grounding exercise is really easy. It's something you can do at any time to change your energy. It's something I do with all of my clients. Um, so I want you to place both of your feet on the ground if you can do so. And when you're ready, I want you to close your eyes and we're gonna do a few of those deep breaths, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Again, in through the nose and out through the mouth. Okay. Just allow your breath to return to its natural rhythm and through the nose and out through the nose. And then begin to bring all of your attention to your feet. Feet are touching the earth, whether they are physically on the ground or touching the earth or not, know that you are rooted and connected to the earth. And on your next inhale, we're going to breathe in the grounding energy and steady pulse of the earth in through our feet, through the soles of our feet, the tops of our feet, breathing it up into your ankles, your calves, your shins, breathing it up into your knees, your upper legs, into your buttocks, your hips, your pelvic floor, breathing that grounding energy in from the earth up into your belly, your low back, your upper back, your chest, breathing it up into your shoulder blades, the tops of your shoulders, sending it down your arms, through your triceps, your biceps, your elbows, your forearms, through your wrists, into your hands, your fingers. And then bringing that grounding energy back up into your collarbones, your neck, your jaw, your chin, your mouth, your cheeks, your outer ears, your inner ears, your nose, breathing it up into your eyes, your forehead, the top of your head. So now your entire body is connected and rooted with the earth supported and grounded. And then staying exactly as you are, but taking the palms of your hands. And if you need to open your eyes and look at me, you can, but do your best to just listen to my voice. We're gonna take the palms of our hands and begin to brush off our body, starting at the top of our head, just brushing gently our head, our shoulders, our arms. And we're brushing off any energy that does not serve us towards the earth brushing it down our body, releasing all this energy that doesn't serve us so the earth can carry it. And when you're done, you feel like you brushed off everything that doesn't serve you in this moment, you can stop and just bring your palms to rest on your lap, palms facing up. And just check into how you feel. Taking a few breaths, feeling a little more grounded, supported and held by the earth. And you can flicker your eyes open whenever you're ready, maybe dropping your chin to your chest and then opening your eyes. And that's just a really easy grounding exercise that you can do when you're feeling stressed or you can do at the beginning of your day, the end of your day, whatever suits you best. 
Now for alternate nostril breathing, we'll go deeper into this when we have our yoga practice, but it's really simple. Um, it helps us balance the yin and yang energies of our body. And so what we do is we take our hand, you can do your, like a peace sign and then let those two peace fingers drop down and we use our thumb and our ring finger, okay? And what we do here is we cover, not necessarily the nostril, you're not pushing like that part. It's the part where it goes, it dips in, okay? So you don't have to push too hard. And what you're gonna do is you just take a few normal inhales and exhales. And then you'll cover the left nostril with your thumb and exhale out the right. Then inhale through the right, cover it up with your ring finger and exhale out the left. Inhale through the left, cover, exhale out the right. It's really simple. It's one that I would suggest when you're starting out, just practice it for one minute and then increase the time slowly as you go on. It's a really great one for helping manage stress. And again, like I said, balancing those energy centers in your body. Okay, so we're, these exercises that I'm just mentioning are all in your resource that I'm gonna send you. And so these are just things that I suggest you do on your own time. Um, this one is called the who, what, when exercise, and it's something to help you better understand who you can lean on in your life, when, and for what. So it has all of the details in your resource. I also included some journal prompts for stress relief. These are morning journal prompts. If you have a journaling practice, you can add these to your practice. If you don't, I highly suggest starting the journaling practice. It's really, really powerful and really helpful for relieving stress. So these are three things, or um, sorry, a few prompts that you can do in the morning, and then some prompts you can do in the evening. And these are all in your resource, like I mentioned. And then of course, I've included a lot more resources too that you can check out that have even more, some things I touched on and lots and lots of other things that will help you on your journey. So there we go. <laughs> we went over a little bit, so I apologize for that, but I am so grateful that, you know, every single one of you are here today. You're showing up on your healing journey. You're dedicating this time to yourself. And hopefully this gave some really good insight on how to help you manage stress. So thank you so much.